Blog Talk Radio. To the balance. My name is Tom Marquis, Cell President. I am your host. I will guide you through this crazy world of sports that we have had going on this week. NBA free agency starts this weekend, baby. We'll see what happens. We're going to break all of that down uh, for you. And we'll 917 is our digits. I'll tell you what. The, the U.S. women's soccer went and moving on against they beat France. Moving on, we got we have some IndyCar action to talk about with Matthew Embry, uh, WSBT up in South Bend, our official IndyCar contributor, standing by in the balance green room, and uh, we're we're going to talk about Road America. We're going to talk about what's coming up in Toronto. We're going to get you up to speed. Steve Wilson for Speedway Digest. Uh, editor in chief of Speedwide Day, Justice, scheduled to join us to talk some NASCAR up in Chicago land, up in the Windy City. Matt Hicks joining us in the second hour to, to break down some NBA free agency. Talk uh, a little homer card about the Pacers, what's going on with the Pacers. At the bottom uh, of the, la- the last segment, uh, Mo can't join us today. He's actually on a plane to Denver. So, Tony D from the Tony D podcast, go to Tony Donahue from the Tony D podcast is going to join us. And we're going to break down all of this NBA free agency. So, I'm going to tell you what, grab yourself some coffee, grab yourself some donuts or whatever it is you got to do. We'll be right back right here on the Balance Radio Network. Tonight. Air National Guard is a reserve component of the United States Air Force and serves alongside active duty Air Force members in times of a national crisis. In addition, the Air Guard serves the state and local community in a wide range of capacities. The reason people join the Air Guard is as diverse as our members and includes such reasons as a deep desire to serve their country, money for college, travel, new job skills, and the pride that goes along with belonging to the greatest military organization in the world. I joined because I felt a calling to serve my country, but I didn't want to be far away from my family, so the Indiana Air National Guard was a perfect fit for me. With over 95 different career opportunities to choose from and 100% paid college tuition to any state-funded college, why not give us a call? Call 1-800-841-3103 or visit online at goang.com to find out more. Again, that's 1-800-841-3103. The Air National Guard, guarding America, defending freedom. It's double trouble, double the fun. At African Safari Wildlife Park in Port Clinton, Ohio, see the largest antelope on Earth, the giant eland, and the ugliest creature on Earth, the African warthog. There's so much to see and do, including the Midwest's only drive through safari. Feed the animals. See live educational shows. Feel the excitement. Have your picture taken with a python or cockatoo. Feel the adventure. 
Shop the Symbol Lodge gift shop with items available from around the globe. Visit the snack bar or picnic facilities. Enjoy a pony or camel ride. Or cheer your favorite porker on to victory in the famous Pork Chop Down. Bring your family to see the rare and exotic animals at African Safari Wildlife Park in Portland, Ohio. Just take Route 2 to the Route 53 North exit and follow the sign. Only 17 miles west of Cedar Point via Route 6. Open every day, rain or shine. When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can be confusing. Like Swedish techno confusing. Bark, bark, meow, meow. Dance with me, purple cow. Bark, bark, meow, meow. Ooh, you lovely cow. Geico makes it easy. With 24-7 access, all you have to do is go to Geico.com and you can save money on car insurance. It just makes sense. Unlike, you know. Dance with me, purple cow. I like your mood. When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can be hard. Like early 90s heavy metal hard. I'm yelling and screaming and I'm loud. Roar. Geico makes it easy. You can review and update your policy or report a claim on Geico.com or the Geico mobile app. Because shouldn't we all have a little less stress in our lives? I'm not even upset about it. Welcome back to the balance. Let's get things kicked off. My name is Saul Marcus El Presidente. Joining us now is Matthew Embry, WSBT in South Bend, our official IndyCar contributor. Matthew, a hot Saturday morning. Gee, is so glad that summer has finally arrived. How are you, sir? Uh, don't worry. I haven't been burned just yet, but uh, got to say, it should be a very interesting U.S. Senior Open. Uh, Steve Stricker setting a 36-hole U.S. Senior Open record with uh, opening with a 62-64, 14 under par, which is an unheard of score for USG event. He's got a two-shot lead on Jerry Kelly, and there's several heavy hitters here. So if you're not down here at the Warren, you need to get down here because uh, the X is going to get very interesting here in the next few hours. Well, absolutely, and, and you're right. You're up there in South Bend where the uh, U.S. Senior Open is going on as well. And uh, let's talk a little bit about that, what's going on with the action there. Uh, have, have you found your way? Uh, I, I know last time we talked, you said you had to, you couldn't go your normal routes. And But uh, talk with us a little bit about what's going on with the U.S. Senior Open. Well, the fun gets underway at 10 a.m. Uh, with the first groups of the third round, so not much beyond that right now. Uh, but like I said, traffic's going to be backed up because there is some construction on some of the thorough, throughways uh, just before you get into the parking lot entrance. And uh, again, uh, for those who are coming down, uh, the parking lot entrance is the entrance to Douglas Road. It's just off the exit of the Indiana Toll Road. And if you take that, uh, that will just follow in. There's no charge for parking. If you have tickets or if you need tickets, there's a will call or a ticket area booth that's just outside the main entrance. And to just head on in and have fun. It's going to be a very interesting day of golf. And uh, thankfully, it looks like Mother Nature is going to hold off. We're going to have no rain concerns today or tomorrow. And it uh, could be very interesting to see how things play out, especially uh, with the rain that happened on Wednesday, softening up the course and the lowest numbers. I don't think you're going to see 62 to 64 today. I think you're going to see some challenges, and uh, we'll see uh, if Mr. Stricker can keep the lead or if uh, he may come back to the rest of the field. Well, absolutely. Uh, we're talking about the USCA Senior Open, and we're going to get into some IndyCar talk to Matthew Embry. But, of course, uh, it's uh, it's happening uh, this weekend up there in South Bend, Indiana. Uh, if if uh, people go decide to go check that out this weekend, uh, what are some of the big names that they can uh, plan to see? Well, Steve Stricker is going to be out today. Obviously, he and Jerry Kelly, the former hockey star, both from Wisconsin, by the way, and they battled last week to a playoff that Jerry Kelly won, uh, actually at the event created by Steve Stricker himself. So I'm sure Stricker wants to flip the script on that. Then you have, of course, uh, the current king of the Champions Tour golf, uh, Bernhard Langer's close. Uh, Tom Watson's going to be in action today. Uh, you're going to have several big names uh, near the leaderboard. Uh, Chris DeMarco, another guy that almost won the Masters on a couple of occasions. So 
several big names uh, that certainly are well within uh, striking distance uh, of the leaders. It's Again, the question, though, is uh, what's Stricker going to do? Is he going to shoot another low score, or uh, is he going to come back to the field? And if he comes back to the field, uh, then you also got uh, defending champion uh, David Toms well, well within striking distance. So several players, but uh, again, uh, right now the world revolves around Mr. Stricker and what he's going to do because he has been uh, lights out perfect. I mean, he is – hit 86 percent of his greens and regulation and 80 percent of fairways off the tee so far this week those are unheard of numbers for a usga event well absolutely and uh, you know we'll, we'll certainly be, be keeping our eyes on, on that for, for for sure let's move on over to indycar up in wisconsin uh at, at road america if you will uh alexander rossi wins Colton Herta on the pole. Good weekend for both Honda and Andretti. What say you, sir? Another opportunity lost to Colton Herta. And I think right now, uh, just he keeps being his own worst enemy with the overaggression. And I think uh, he reminds me of a young Paul Tracy a little bit too much, where I think you need to tone him down just a little bit to make sure he gets to the finish. Because obviously, if you can't finish, you can't win. And, uh, I think that's the job now for Michael and Brian is to uh, and to slow him down. I don't know if Steinbrenner is going to be in a position to be able to get involved with that, but uh, maybe even Brian Barnhart saying, hey, kid, I mean, you're doing great, but you need to tone it down just a little bit and make sure you get to the finish of these races because, I mean, one-lap wonders aren't going to win, get you championship points uh, and give you a chance to win a championship. So I think he'll learn that with time, but i uh, got to say, though, Rossi's looking good right now. If he keeps this up and backs it up uh, this upcoming week in Toronto, uh, you got to like his chances to win the championship regardless of what uh, maybe Joseph Newgarden does, even though Joseph Newgarden's still leading the points championship by just a little bit. Well, absolutely, and I tell you what, it's exciting to watch Joseph Newgarden, and I said earlier on in the season, Joseph Newgarden has the potential to be the 2019 IndyCar champion, and he's not proven me wrong yet. Talk with me a little bit about why Joseph Newgarden is going to be your next in NTT IndyCar champion. Well, right now he's got to stay ahead of Rossi as far as the, uh, you know, road and street course events. Cause I think that's where he can gain ground on Rossi. I think the oval tracks, I think Rossi has the slight advantage, even though he does not have, you know, the Chevrolet engine. But I think uh, right now, if Newgarn's going to pull this off and win his second uh, NTT Data IndyCar title, he's going to need to start uh, getting some better results on road courses that consistently beat Rossi. Because if Rossi gains ground on him, smart money said he's also going to gain ground when they get to those remaining oval events as well. So the scenarios for Newgarn right now is he needs to have a good weekend in Toronto and then hold his ground uh, at these oval tracks as much as he can because uh, – I'd say right now, if he can't get it down the road street circuit, so he's going to have a hard time uh, taking the tie away from Alexander Rossi. Let's talk a little bit about Simon Padishon and the Indy 500 hangover. It wouldn't matter who was the winner of the Indy 500 at this time of year. We're still going to be talking about that. I, I think that, that, that finally he, that, that that's starting to wear off a little bit, if you will. I mean, I can only imagine winning the Indianapolis 500 and then doing all your media obligations and then get in the car and running two races in Detroit and then back, back over to, to uh, Texas. But Simon Patajon uh, seemed to feel, look a little bit better at Road America. Do you think he's shaking that off? And it was really good to see uh, him with the initial um, sculpture, if you will, of the face of him going on the Bongwarger Trophy uh, this week. Simon Patajon, your Indianapolis 500 winner in 2019. Where are we at with him? Well, and it looks like in August, uh, the trophy will be completely updated. Apparently, they can't wait till December because Pagano's getting ready probably for the Rolex 24 and some of the other Enduros uh, with Penske. Uh, so, obviously, he won't be available then. And obviously, you know, the North American International Show and the baby boards and all that stuff. So, they're hustling that ahead. It'd be good for a change to see, actually, you know, the face on there. And, uh, again, uh, tell you William Barron's one of the best sculptors this is the 30th face he has put on the trophy and uh, everyone it seems like keeps getting better and better and you thought uh, his first one with Ari Lyon died because initially I remember when they were initially doing this and they plan on having a different sculptor do it every single year but the way 
Barons did the Lion Dyke uh, likeness in 1990 with the hair and all that. I mean, any guys said, okay, well, forget that. And we'll just have them do it every year. So uh, still going strong even 30 years into this. And uh, got to say, uh, the Pagano one uh, was pretty impressive. But then again, again, 